Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of my dramatic reading of Tsukihime, A Piece of Blue Glass Moon. Uh, this will be episode 19, I believe. Last we left off, Shiki and Arquade went on something of a date. They went to the park and watched uh, people walk around and children play. Then they went to a fast food restaurant and had some cheeseburgers. And they talked philosophy and um, the human condition. And that is run about where we last left off. So, without further ado, let us continue with Tsukihime. What's wrong, Shiki? Your face looks gloomy all of a sudden. Oh, do you need to go to the bathroom? Come on. I'm weighed down by serious stuff here. And that's where your mind goes? <laughs> Baskin ribbons. It's not even trying, dude. I breathe out a sigh. But I guess, in a way, I'm saved by her carefree attitude. Regardless of how much I thought I'd dedicate to it, I get the impression that the question of whether, whether she should drink blood or not doesn't weigh on Arquate's mind at all. That's right. I guess at the end of the day, it's none of my business. Jeez, what are you mumbling about over there? It's not fair to hide things from me, Shiki. Arquate is once again growling at me like an indignant cat. I'm not hiding anything from you. If anything, you're the one hiding things from me. Or at least, you certainly seem to have fun talking about things I don't understand all the time. Having fun? Well, you're not wrong. <clears throat> Oh, so you really do enjoy seeing me at my wit's end. Do you just like messing me? Uh, do you just like messing with me? Or is it more the thrill of holding all the cards? Well, I guess it doesn't matter either way. I'm a totally different organism after all. It's not like that at all. I've been completely forthcoming in all of my conversations with you. If you feel like you're in the dark, isn't that down to you not asking me any questions rather than me refusing to answer them? She hits me where it hurts. It's true that I consciously avoid asking Arquaid questions. As a human being, I'm terrified of wading any further into the world of vampires. And as Tonoshiki, I want to hold on to the idea that I can still turn back, even now. <clears throat> However, after last night, I'm certain I've crossed a threshold. There's no going back to the safety I once knew. And now that I've come this far, there are things that I need to know. Uh, all right then. So, you'll answer me, no matter what I ask? Yeah, we're a team after all. Well, she asked for it. I guess I'll start grilling her on things I'm not too clear on. Starting with the main question. The one she keeps avoiding. The true identity of our enemy. I should use this chance to find out what kind of person they are. Well, then let me ask you. Arquade, just what kind of vampire is your enemy anyway? You must have some sort of relationship with them if you've gone this length to chase after them, right? Uh, well, that topic. What? Didn't we just agree not to hide anything from each other? We did. But don't get upset when you hear the answer. I, I only recently discovered that the vampire's lurking in this city. So I haven't even had a chance to see his current form yet. I don't know what form the enemy's taken this time. Whether he's a man or a woman. Or even if he's a child or an adult. Well, what about his special traits? 
I mean, love had a superpower, right? Doesn't our target have something special like that? There's no way of knowing until we can see him up close. The enemy I'm after isn't that powerful of a dead apostle. But I can't predict what his strong point will be this time. Or what form he's taken. <clears throat> yeah. I guess you could say that adaptability is his special trait. All I can say for sure is that there are signs of him in this city. Arcoid isn't lying. But I get the feeling she isn't exactly telling me the whole truth either. For example... So... We won't know what his traits are until we find him. Alright, I buy that. It makes perfect sense. But you at least know his name, right? His... His name. Yeah, his name. Arquade silently hangs her head. It seems like she has some reason she can't tell me his name. And it's eating her up inside. At least, that's what I thought. His name... A shiver runs down my spine. There's so much ice in her words that it feels like our surroundings have been frozen solid. You want to know his name, Shiki? There's no sign of her hiding the truth. His name is Michael. Michael Roa Valdemjong. He's a human turned vampire. A run-of-the-mill dead apostle. Her beautiful lips move, but she does not look up. All that I can sense from her is raw, blood-curdling hatred. Arquaid, you... Arquaid's shoulders are trembling. She looks like she's struggling to suppress the emotions raging within her. Uh, I'm sorry for asking you something so stupid. Telling me his name is more than enough. I'll see the rest for myself after we hunt him down. Arquaid shakes her head slightly. It's as if she's saying that she can't forget so easily. Time passes, neither of us saying a word. Sorry, Shiki. That was shameful, huh? Seems like I can't keep my cool when I say his name. Arquaid apologizes with her head still hanging. This tempered appearance isn't like her at all. You don't have to worry about it. Even if you feel bad about it, I'm actually a little relieved. It was honestly very human of you. Really? How so? Well, you hate this person so much that you're hunting him down and only allow yourself to refer to him as the enemy because you're worried about letting your emotions get the better of you, right? I can empathize with that way more than I can the idea of you going around coldly exterminating vampires like it's just a job. If I'd known your reasons, I'd have... <clears throat> I was about to say lent you a hand, but stopped halfway. I've been claiming that I'm only helping Arquaid in order to protect the city. To finish that sentence would be to contradict the excuse I continue to cling to. Uh, anyway. That's all the questions I have. Let's eat while it's still hot. This sort of food tastes pretty dire once it gets cold. Yeah. Though... I have to say, it doesn't taste that great to begin with. Your palate may be, well, <laughs> different. The princess averts her gaze 
as though to avoid saying out loud exactly how boorish my tastes are. I'm sure we just weren't feeling this menu today. That's all. I maintain that there are still times when a burger really hits the spot. Having finished our meal and had our fill of window shopping along the main street, we're now on our way to my school. It's already sunset. I'm not sure what Arquaid had in mind when she said, I want to visit the school that you go to. But that devilish smile of hers steamrolled any resistance I might have mustered. <clears throat> it's five o'clock. There's virtually no signs of life at the main gate. No doubt thanks to the official notice stating that all club activities are suspended and students are to return home promptly. If there were any people lingering around, I would probably be able to count them with one hand. As long as we don't do anything to attract attention, I should be able to at least show her around the courtyard. Just so we're clear, I'm not taking you inside the school building. I spent the whole day playing truant, and you don't even... And you don't even go here. I know, I know. I won't cause any trouble, so relax. Arquaid stands by the front gate and fervently peers around at the grounds. Having a blonde beauty hovering or Having a blonde beauty hovering around the gift front... Uh, boy. <laughs> Having a blonde beauty hovering around the front gate like this is sure to attract attention. Arquaid, this way. Let's head to the courtyard. I grab her by the hand and rush inside. Aww. <laughs> the courtyard is completely silent. Come think of it. She's been here before. I felt like I was going to have a heart attack at that time. But looking back on it now, I can't help but smile. A vampire out and about during the day is hard enough to believe as it is. But one wandering around my school just makes a mockery of common sense. Hey, did you notice, Shiki? Did I notice what? The school. As far as I can tell. There's nobody else here. What did you say? <clears throat> Hearing that, I peer into the school from the courtyard. It's no surprise that the classroom lights are off, but I'd expected the staff room to still be packed with teachers at this hour. Instead, it, it too is dark and empty. It's just as Arquaid said, there really isn't anyone here but us. The front gate was open, but maybe we missed the last of the staff members filtering out while we were on our way into the courtyard. <coughs> hey, Shiki, there's nobody inside, you know. Arquaid stares at me with puppy dog eyes. I think I know where this is going. Absolutely not. I try and put my foot down. But she isn't even listening to me. If there's nobody here, who's gonna get mad at us for going inside? <laughs> we came in, uh, we came at just the right time, didn't we? I'm telling you, I really don't want to do this. Wow, the inside is a lot bigger than I expected. Even the corridors are wide. There's so much room for activities. That's strange. Arquaid's voice doesn't sound like it's coming from nearby, but from over by the windows into the school. Shiki, this door won't open, but it's fine if I break it, right? She isn't even waiting to hear what I have to say. Arquaid is winding back her fist in front of the window, pi uh, window pane, seeing her make the universal motion for, I'm gonna hit ya. 
brings dizziness rushing back. <clears throat> you little... Why don't you ever listen to what people say? There's no way I can let that agent of chaos loose in our school building. Even if it's impossible to stop her, I need to at least try. Huh, you came! I don't know what she finds so amusing, but she's grinning from ear to ear. Arquate, what exactly is so fun about looking around my school? If you're just looking for a place to mess around, there are better options than there. I'll take you somewhere nice, so let's get out of here. But this isn't bad, right? Seeing the place that you always go to is fun in and of itself. Shiki, I want to look around inside. Won't you kill the lock on the window for me? Will I kill the lock for you, Arquaid? You'd do a cleaner job than I would, right? You can cut things uh, in a way no other blade can. Even if someone does discover it later, I'll just write it off as something they can't explain. Arquaid excitedly waves over one of, waves me over to one of the windows that opens into the corridor. Ah, oh, jeez. You really are acting like a child. Against my better judgment, I lower my glasses slightly and take a look. <clears throat> There's a line running right across the latch, securing the window. Ah, oh, damn it. Isn't that convenient? I take out the knife from my pocket and slice open the latch. Well, perhaps it's more correct to call it killing rather than slicing it open. Okay, we can enter through here. I open the window and enter the school building without taking off my shoes. <sighs> maybe I guessed well, or maybe it's just too familiar of a trope. The very first place that Arquaid wanted to go was my classroom on the third floor. What do you usually learn in here? What do I learn? Uh, just the usual things that a student normally learns. We study history in order to broaden our understanding of our own culture. We also deepen our understanding of how things work through physics and mathematics. Oh, and we're also taught English in case we need to travel abroad. I see. Since it was you, I thought they would teach you how to efficiently dissect a human body, or how to handle a blade. Arquade offhandedly says something rather amusing. Arquade. You know full well what kind of place this is, don't you? <laughs> Correct. Arquaid claps her hands together in applause. It's always hard to understand what's going on inside her head. But this time I'm more stumped than usual. This school has nothing to do with slaying vampires. So what is she trying to achieve by coming here? Shiki? What is it? You look serious all of a sudden. Did you have a reason for bringing me here after all? No, I didn't have any good reason for coming here. I just wanted to ask you what goes on in here. What goes on in here? Oh, you mean at school? Yeah. You spend half of your day in this place, right? Have you ever used any kind of knowledge or experience you build up here? Don't you ever think it's a waste of time to learn stuff you don't need to survive? Uh huh? Out of all the questions she's asked so far, this one's the most difficult to grasp. You might never apply some of the knowledge or skills you learned here even once in your entire life, right? Don't you think that's pointless? Well, it's true that a lot of it is 
probably useless. For example, I'm studying mathematics, but if I don't end up in a profession that relies on it, then I won't really need it again. If I just wanted to get by, I'd be fine knowing only basic arithmetic. Even if I were to learn English or the history of my country, there's no guarantee that it'd come in handy later. It's as you say, the majority of what I learn here isn't really necessary for day-to-day -day life. Huh. So you're fully aware. If that's the case, why do you continue to do such pointless things? Your lives are so short. I wouldn't have thought that you'd have time to spare for things like this. Time to spare? Sorry about that. Time to spare? Well, it's not like I have a clear purpose in life yet. I may as well while away my time like this until I do. I can't believe it. You, voluntary, you voluntarily endure this bondage day after day, even knowing full well how pointless it is? Yeah, I can't believe this at all. Arquaid has begun sounding severely depressed. Give me just a second. <laughs> okay. I can't say I have any real clue as to why, despite the fact that she's explicitly spelled it out for me. However, I can at least respond to her soliloquy. Daily bondage, huh? I guess you could see it that way. But is it really so bad to do something pointless? Huh? It's fine, right? To waste time, that is. Even if what we learn can only be used here, it'll still serve as a reminder of days gone by. There's gonna come a time when we're old and have nothing left to do but reflect. These days are for us to look back with a, better, with a bitter smile as we remember how things used to be. That has meaning in and of itself, you know. Even though the contents of those memories are pointless, you'd, you're saying that you'd enjoy looking back on them? Yeah, that's exactly it. Humans are conveniently built to remember the past through rose-tinted glasses. We simply forget all the inconveniences. If you hold the view that life is full of pointless things, you might end up reasoning your way to the conclusion that life itself is meaningless, right? On the contrary, I think that all these useless things are what people really live for. I want to watch, but I'm behind. I need to catch up. Absolutely no problem. I have an entire backlog of uh, all the previous episodes fully uploaded to my channel, so you can go back and watch those whenever you want. And please feel free to leave a, uh, leave a comment and a like when you do. Thank you so much, Tom's the fish. That's why I'm not too hung up on it. I believe that deceiving yourself over and over again, trying to, stra uh, to stave off the understanding of how meaningless it all is, it's just a part of existing. So, you recognize that it's pointless, and then choose to live with it? I can't do things that feel pointless. Even up to now, I've never done anything that wasn't necessary. What are you talking about? You could say that everything we've done today is pointless, couldn't you? Your, object is, your, uh, your objective is to find vampires, right? If so, there's no need to walk around the city with me. Uh, I guess you're right. I don't really understand why I did that. Uh, I don't really understand why I did that myself. I tried to get you to explain it to me as someone used to being useless, but I only ended up more confused. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The fault is all mine. I'm just a human who can't escape futility. I can't even give a good reason for my continued existence. Uh, right. I'm sorry. I know what you're trying to say. Uh, I'm not sure if this is Arquaid or Shiki speaking. 
humans are a species humans as a species aren't evaluated as individuals but as part of a group oh this is this is i remember this line this is arcoid i'm sorry i know what you're trying to say humans as a species aren't evaluated as individuals but as part of a group that's why if one is wrong it's tolerated as long as the entire group is correct you can all flourish as one and together bring forth a single answer when time when the time comes that your species must face its fate but since we are only individuals we cannot allow ourselves to be wrong no matter what <clears throat> excuse me i can never allow another person's will to influence me that's why uh, i've always been taught to never do anything unnecessary Arcoid's voice is subdued. She pieces her words together as if she were confessing a sin. But then I became confused. In such a short period, in just a meager seven days, I wondered if I was... I wondered if what I was doing was right. I mean, I had so much fun up until now. I never thought I could be so happy from just being like this, from just existing. I wonder if I'm broken somehow. After all, I've never been awake for this long before. Sometimes I wonder if I'm already fallen asleep, and this is just some selfish dream of mine. I'm at a loss for words. What she's describing now is something I cannot truly comprehend. I cannot hope to fathom even a fraction of the feelings that are tormenting Arquaid. All I can understand is that I can't bear to see her like this. Uh, what do you mean, broken? You look just fine. I might appear that way, but that's not how I feel inside. All these unnecessary emotions, both happy and sad, have become so much stronger. If I can no longer ignore the things that I could before, wouldn't you consider that being broken? And besides, I'm not normal. I'm not like you. I'm a vampire. It almost looked like Arquaid was laughing forlornly. It was fleeting, obscured by the red glow of the sunset. Th but it's strange. That doesn't feel right. The classroom at sunset. A woman looking down helplessly, bathed in the red glow of the sun. To think that such a thing could exist before my eyes. That's not... like you. Yeah, it really isn't. You're a vampire. So don't show me this side of you. The side of you that's as helpless as any ordinary girl. Don't worry about whether you can ignore it or not. Or whether something's pointless. Just forget about all that. It's not good to think so seriously about yourself. I don't know what exactly is bothering you, but you're fine the way you are. I mean, it's not as though you're bothering anyone. Is that so? You've yelled at me plenty of times, though. Is that different? Uh, you idiot, I'm an exception. I committed the sin of murdering you, so having you drag me around like this is what I deserve. That's why it's fine. I'm doing this because I enjoy it. So please don't go thinking that this bothers me. Arcoid's eyes remain dark. I'll really be in trouble if she keeps making that face. She looks so frail. I won't be able to stop myself from embracing her at this rate. How 
I'm begging you. Keep your head up, Arquaid. Sure, you're selfish. You act rashly and cause me no end of trouble. But apart from that, you're decent. There's nothing broken about you. You're no different from any other girl. So come on. Let me see that smile of yours again. If you keep looking at me like that, I'll start feeling bad as well. That was a terrible thing to say. Am I really that selfish? Arquaid mutters her response slowly, as if gauging my reaction. Not good. I got a little caught off guard. Was this princess seriously unaware of her own selfishness up until this point? You idiot. What are you talking about? If you took selfish out of Arquaid, he'd be left with nothing but bones. <laughs> bones! I try to be light-hearted and poke fun at her, but end up bursting out in laughter. I mean, never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined Arquaid sheepishly asking me questions about herself. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's mad. You dummy! They were having a serious discussion here. How could you be such a meanie? <laughs> well, that's how I am. Didn't I say I'm nice to everyone else but you? It's not like I've only started being mean to you, uh, you know. I give her a wry smile, as though inviting her to try and deny what I just said. No objections from her side. The cloud that had been hanging over her head earlier is nowhere to be seen, and her face is back to her usual, genuine self. Yeah, as I thought. You're not you when you're not lively. I'm a little relieved, too. Huh? Why are you feeling relieved? You said that you act mean towards me, right? Well, I mean, that's true, but... It's like it's fine no matter how much she drags me around. Or how much trouble she brings along with her. I simply couldn't stand to see her so depressed. Hold on. If I continue this train of thought, it won't end well. It's true that she's pretty and that she really is a good person. I also believe that there's never a dull moment with her around. But that's all there is to it. I mustn't develop any more feelings than this. I think it's a little late for that, Murrah. Get a hold of yourself, Shiki. No matter how lovely she may be, she's still a vampire in the end. Jeez, you really are indecisive. Do you not even know your, uh, what you yourself are thinking? <clears throat> I don't want to hear that coming from a vampire who's been whining like you have. It's fine if I don't know myself. I'm well aware of how weird I am. It's true that my memory is always hazy, and I get anemic all the time. I basically can't even take care of myself. I see. So that's why you're always in a daze. Arquaid nods to herself, as if the final piece of some great puzzle had finally slid into pa uh, place. I'm too preoccupied with wondering whether she seriously believes that makeshift excuse to actually get mad at her. I guess Akiha scolds me for zoning out all the time. I must just project unreliability or something. Now then. We can't stay in this classroom forever. Give me just a second. Ugh, there we go. I think it's about time to leave. There might not be anyone else around right now, but there's still a chance that a teacher on duty will return. Come on, let's get going. There's nothing left to do here, right?
Yeah, there isn't, but... Shiki? I glance over at her. Arcoid holds her tongue for a moment before asking me something peculiar. Is there anything you find fun? <laughs> Do you have a fever today, dear princess? Don't make fun of me. I know a little bit about your body. You understand what I mean, right? With a body like that, it wouldn't be surprising if you dropped dead at any moment. I grit my teeth all of a sudden. I'm excuse me. I grit my teeth at the sudden serious line of questioning. They make a grinding sound. It feels like the scar on my chest is wiggling around. Well, all humans die at some point. But in your case, you'll die sooner than most. Arquate has a serious look in her eyes. Everyone has lines of death on them, though. That's plenty of places where they could easily die. I'm not the only person whose body can fall apart that easily. I'm not really sure. But when I look at you, sometimes I feel afraid. So, please answer me. Are there still times that you can feel happy? In spite of the fact that your existence is so precarious, Shiki. Do I ever feel happy? <laughs> this woman really is. You really are an idiot, aren't you? There's no way I would not, uh, there's no way I would know that, right? There's no way I would know whether my own life is enjoyable or not. An exemplary sense of justice, morals deemed acceptable by society, a nature that values harmony. These are all values given to me by Sensei. As rules for how to live. They're so convenient and all-purpose that I've continued to exist by them all this time. I am, at my core, a savage. I've never understood these nebulous philosophical conversations. There's one thing that I can say for certain. Seven years ago, I was on the verge of death. As part of my treatment, I was operated on at the hospital where I had been taken. During that brief period, I felt like I was in a place wrapped in complete darkness. I guess you could call it a dream. At the time, I felt like I was dead. Like that dark place was just what being dead was like. After that, I was miraculously saved. I ran into Sensei and returned to my normal life. For all of that, I hold a deep, everlasting gratitude. I hadn't realized until I died that the world was such a peaceful and beautiful place. Even if my eyes try to deny all of those feelings. I don't know whether living in this world is fun or not. Seems unlikely it'd be that way for my whole life. As long as I have these eyes, I cannot allow myself to treat death lightly. But even so, life is beautiful. There are many people who say they can't find anything fun in their lives. Human existence itself can be enjoyable. I think I knew that long ago. I'm sure that every single day was filled with bliss before I had the accident, even if that's in the distant past now. 
That's why I continue to live like this, even when I'm shown how pointless everything is. I'm not human anymore. Thinking about proper morals, proper values, and the truth is difficult. Tonoshiki lost his concept of fun long ago. Even now, if you were to ask me if I'm enjoying life, unless something truly heinous is happening, I'd tell you that I am. No matter how much despair I feel, I'm content simply existing. This is not something that needs to be taught. Just being here like this is enough to give a human existence meaning. But you know, isn't it fun to just be alive? Everything until now has been fun. I'm so inclined to keep on with it. I'm sure that's the right choice. Well, if I had to answer your question, I guess I'd say something like that. I may have given her an answer, but I'm still a little embarrassed by it. After all, it's the answer of someone who's only been alive for a mere 17 years. I'm probably wrong. And yet, the woman in front of me says, I see. So that's what your heart tells you. It's fun just being alive, huh? That's right. Even if you know it's unnecessary, you wouldn't want to throw away something that's fun, would you? I was afraid that you might, and ended up asking you a foolish question. But I think I'm happy with that answer. With an unmatched smile, she affirms the beliefs that I hold in my immature heart. What? Are you still hung up about, uh, are you still hung up about that stuff from earlier? Yeah. But those ill feelings are gone for now. That's why I won't lose my way until I defeat the vampire that lurks in this city. Until then, I'll fight alongside you. Isn't that right? Nods Arcoid, smiling. <sighs> Until we defeat the vampire, huh? Y yeah, that's right. That's the kind of relationship we have. Today felt like such an ordinary day. I guess that's why I forgot such a fundamental fact. Hey, Arquaid. After everything is over, when we finally defeat this vampire, before we part ways, can we hang out together like this one last time? What do you mean? Uh, I'm saying that once you've completed your objective, we should do pointless things like this again. In the end, we're only here together now because we're cooperating. I was just wondering if, once we're truly done with our duties, we could meet again, without there having to be a reason for it. More than that. I want us to meet casually as friends who enjoy each other's company, leaving behind all thoughts of vampires and the like. I just thought that if we created normal memories together, then she would definitely be happy. That's all. Oh, you could see his reflection in the thing. I didn't notice that. That's funny. Uh, well, if you don't have the time for it, it's okay. I say the exact opposite of what's on my mind. After, uh, after Arcrate opens her eyes wide in surprise. Oh, 
Of course! Let's come here again after everything is over, Shiki. Even if there's no reason, I'm sure it'll be super fun. With a radiant smile, Arcade buoyantly solidifies the promise. The classroom at sunset. In the midst of these hues that seem detached from time itself, that image is implanted in my memory as the most important thing of all. In the end, Arquaid makes me show her around the broadcasting room, fine arts room, and many other parts of the school. By the time we finally leave, the sun has already set. It's just past 7.30. It's a bit early. We should begin searching for vampires. It's gotten pretty dark. I can't think of anywhere else to go. So should we get started, Arquaid? What, already? There's still plenty to do in town, isn't there? Well, the sooner we do it, the better, right? We already messed around plenty during the day. We should at least get some work done during the night. You seem way too into this. Why'd you break your promise yesterday if you were, se if you were this serious about it? I mean, I didn't exactly do that on purpose, did I? I could barely meet you. I could barely even move by the time uh, yesterday evening rolled around. I'd been planning on going to the park until the last minute. Give me just a second. <laughs> Though, now that I think about it, doing so would have been pretty reckless. If Akiha hadn't stopped me from going to meet up with Arquaid in that condition, I would almost certainly have been... I would have almost certainly held her back in a critical moment. There we go. Hmm. Really now? Well then let's get to it. What's up with that face? Against my better judgment, I'll ask. What do you mean by that? You said that you intended to go to the park, right? We still have some time. So if you couldn't get there yesterday, you could just take, you could just make up for it today. Arquaid begins galloping off, her footsteps echoing lightly. It looks like she's seriously headed to the park. All right. I hate to cut things off early like this. Uh, but... I'm actually not feeling well. <laughs> I think I, like, right before I started streaming, I ate a piece of chocolate that I think was older than I thought it was. <laughs> so, uh, we're gonna cut things short. <laughs> um, everything, uh, did you, it, she, he just keeps running. They just, they're just running. <laughs> um, yeah, so thoughts so far, real quick, before I get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, this was basically almost beat for beat the exact same scene from the original, but it was, I, I don't know if it was written better or translated better or both, but it was done very well. And I started to choke up a bit, especially the couple of, uh, Shiki's monologues kind of got me a little bit. So that was really cool. Um, anyway, uh, we will be back on Wednesday with more Tsukihime. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time. I gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs>